What's up, everyone? This is Michael Heredia from Pro Wrestling Tees, owner of M3 Toys, and I'm here on the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. You're watching DC TV. Now, here's your host, the voice, Dave Canning. It's you, it's me, it's DC TV. It's you, it's me, it's DC TV. Uh huh. Let's start the show! You better introduce me as King. Bounty yeah, Father yeah. King, Nick. <laughs> you have to. I don't, I don't have to do anything, okay? I edit the show. <laughs> that is right, ladies and gentlemen. It is you. It is me. It is NRND. And today on episode 28 of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast... We have from M3 Toys and Pro Wrestling Tees from Chicago, Illinois, the one, the only, Mr. Michael Heredia. Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. No problem. Thanks for having me. I am I am thrilled to have you on tonight because we have a lot to talk about with you. But before we get to you, we do have to address the elephant in the room, and that is that I no longer have a crown on my head. Is Because <laughs> this past Saturday, I went to a wrestling show because we're getting back to normal People wore their mask and washed their hands and did all the things we were supposed to do. And I was able to go to a live wrestling show. And while I was not prepared, Nick rolled me up unfairly and won the Slammiversary Predictions Contest. A couple of good brothers won some tag team titles. There you go. And now, I told you, the real world champion from the beginning. Y'all just didn't want to listen. It's all right. I'll I'll be a fair, kind king. There you go. Not like other kings. No one has ever successfully defended that crown, by the way. So at All Out, I will become the first ever three-time, three-time, count them, three-time king of the nerds. You guarantee that. AEW is my wheelhouse. There you go. (laughs) Michael, are you going to get to go to All Out this year in Chicago? Yeah, we're all going to – we're going to be there for all – pretty much all the three shows, and then we got some other stuff planned during the week. So there's a – we'll be busy that week. I, I bet. So yeah. we will we'll ask the question we ask all our guests. What makes you a wrestling nerd, Michael? I mean, honestly, born with it and just grew up watching it. My dad was a big fan uh, watching it. So I kind of, you know, picked it up early. Like when I was four or five, I was already into wrestling figures. And I was I think I was the only one talking about wrestling when I was in school growing up. So I started young and just and never kind of left. So I was always into, you know, rumors and background stuff that was going on. So I was that kind of wrestling nerd, you could say. I, I always wanted to know what was going on before anyone else knew. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I like that. I have a question um, off that real quick, if I may. Yeah. As, for, as you watch forever, at what point, hopefully I'm not speaking, spoiling anything for anyone. At what point did you uh, think wrestling maybe wasn't 100% real? Like, I'm curious. Um, I want to say, you know, because my dad would always kind of, you know, toy around like, yeah, look, it's it's real. But then I think as I got older, like maybe eight, nine or ten, I think I want to say around that time frame, it was like, OK, this isn't real. And this is how kind of it works. And I think at, at that time that like show on NBC was coming out. I don't know if you guys remember. Oh, the, yeah. the wrestling's yeah. secret exposed. Yes. So I she's saw a that. stunt granny. Yeah. So I saw that, and I'm like, okay, now it, it all makes sense. Now everything made sense then. Yeah, and then like I think one of the other things too, I went to the Jericho debut show in Chicago, which is August 9th, ninety nine, which is also my birthday. So my dad got last minute tickets, um, sold out all state arena at Rosemont Horizon at the time. And we got obstructed view tickets. So we were behind the screen. That's the only thing that was left, nothing else. Um, so I, I remember Jericho from the WCW days, and I saw him getting ready. And I'm like, why is he here? And this is before he debuted. I'm like, why is he here? I see him getting ready. No one else knew what was going on. And I'm like, is he the countdown guy? And my dad's like, well, that makes sense. Now that you know it's everything's planned. So I kind of, you know. It took from there. You could have spoiled it for everyone. Everything that was going to happen, just yell it. <laughs> right, Jericho's exactly. here. Yeah. But, I mean, that was probably one of the best debuts ever, and it was cool to kind of be there for that. So, 
Speaking of debuts, do you mm-hmm. think a certain Chicago native is going to debut <laughs> at All Out? Or Who will he knows? hold off? <laughs> he could hold off for Arthur Ashe Stadium when I'll be there. Just saying. Who, who knows? You know, we it, it's it's all over now. I actually just made a tweet on the PWT Twitter, and it's going oh, to already. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're kind of you know just you know posting stuff, whatever. I, I honestly have no idea. I hope you know we see him all the time, and it's like you, you have that that hope that he wants to come back. I think honestly, it's the perfect age. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone else is doing fine at that age. Edge is doing fine, you know, and he, he looks great in the ring right now. Everyone's at that that age, and I think it's kind of you come back now or that's it, you know. Now, we spoke to David Stankin on episode yeah. 10 of this show, and he told us, like, obviously, you know, he and, and Ryan, at least he, he mentioned us, you know, they're privy to certain information about what's going Correct. to happen. Like when Moxley debuted, they knew about that yep. in advance, make sure. Are you privy to that information? Not that we're prying. I'm just curious who right. knows what and who to yes. bribe. No, yeah. So like, for example, the Mox show, the same thing. It was pretty much me, Ryan and Dave um, and a couple other people that knew about it. Because if you look at when Mox debuted, it's me and Ryan. We're the only ones looking down at our phones. <laughs> and that's because we're activating Mox's shirt. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I remember it was like that. Like it's... <laughs> right, exactly. So like as soon as it came out, no one else is looking down except <laughs> us two. And we're just trying to activate that product, that shirt with the Wi-Fi that we had in there, which was horrible because mm-hmm. so many people in there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so there, there's a couple things obviously we need to know beforehand. And but other than that, yeah, there's a very, very small amount of people though. <laughs> Would, would you say Ryan and Dave being one of them? Mm-hmm. Not not this Ryan and Dave. We we know nothing. We just <laughs> right. guess the rest of them. <laughs> I can't draw a stick figure, let alone what right. David Stankin draws. My God. <laughs> um, so it, would you say that's um hindered your enjoyment of wrestling at all, or has it like made it more um, exciting in a way? You know, this is the thing. So I was obviously we were always used to just, you know, WWE and kind of you know, the Indies and then Ring of Honor and Impact, that was the only thing that was around. And, you know, my my thing when I had my son, he's four now, it was always to bring him up with wrestling, you know, because that you want to kind of live through them again and, you know, see if he enjoys it. Luckily, he loves it, but he loves AEW. So I think that's the cool thing is with AEW, it brought that that enjoyment factor again. And you like, you know, doing it, even though it's considered obviously our job and we – we work obviously at pro wrestling tees where, you know, working on AEW stuff all the time and ring of honor stuff and whatnot. But I don't think it hindered anything. If anything, it makes it more exciting. And you're kind of, you know, shooting for different goals. Now, like how many of these can we sell now? Like, well, or this guy's debuting, let's make it a big deal type of thing. So I think, I think it's cool to be in the know, um, but also it, it makes you, it makes your job a little bit more important where you have certain numbers and goals you want to reach for yourself. Definitely. Um, we, we touched on this last week. We, uh, we answered a bunch of fan uh, questions. One of them was um, what, mo- what moment recently made you pop and, and just almost fall in love with wrestling again. I noted Jericho when he was dressed up as Pentagon at all in. Oh yeah, um, for I sure. Think, Nick, you talked about Moxley. I, Ryan, I can't even remember what you had mentioned. Neither right. do I, <laughs> <laughs> but, but for you, Michael, like what, I mean, with your all your intel and knowledge, what what moment recently has made you almost fall back in love with wrestling all over again? Um, honestly, I think just with all the debuts that we've been seeing at AEW, like Andrade, uh, he was always one of my favorites in WWE, but he never got the chance after NXT. So when I I kind of heard that he's coming, I'm like, okay, that's awesome because I know he's going to get the chance being Hispanic, and um, I like that factor that he's bringing, especially now with the Guerreros. You see all that coming together, and obviously Eddie is one of my favorites growing up, so I like that they're still carrying that name in AEW, whether it be with Andrade or or Chavo now, so I, I really like that. Nice. Um, and so for, for people who have not watched Behind the Merchandise, uh, behind the merch yeah. doc on YouTube. Tell us exactly what is what is a typical day for you um, at work in, in pro yeah. wrestling tees? Yeah, so so my official title, I don't even know what my title is. It's, it's been changed a couple of times now. I think it's web specialist now. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so typical days, um, 
you know, pretty much going in, you know, checking up. But we're, me and Ryan are pretty much texting, you know, 8 a.m. and on about different ideas or different things we need to do during the day. But, yeah, going in, checking emails. I handle all the pro wrestling crate stuff also, like the customer service for that. I do that. Um, obviously, with the new All Elite crate, I do that also. So pretty much looking at emails, any updates that need to be done on all the sites that we have, which is obviously a bunch of sites. Um, any marketing ideas, any marketing plans that we need to do during the day. I handle the processing tees app. I handle the text message notifications that go out, the emails. So pretty much anything related to marketing or social media is on my side. Okay. And yeah. then, uh, um, you were about to say something, Ryan? Oh, well, um, <clears throat> the AEW crate, you brought that up. Were you guys at all surprised how quick that went? Yeah, very. So when we first brought up the idea to AEW, we had, we had a certain number and we were kind of going back and forth, back and forth. Um, the way we set it up, the time frame, it was supposed to last two months. Uh, <laughs> and it only lasted two and a half days. So I, I think we know. The problem with that is all the items that we have for the crate are already ordered. So we can't say, hey, let's do more because then they're not going to get here on time and it'll delay the crate. We're trying to get everything done you know, October 15th or even before that. So there's so much going on in October. That's the issue too. You got two crates, you got the Jericho cruise and a bunch of other stuff going on. So it's a busy month, but yeah, no, we definitely did not expect, you know, two, three day sellout. No way. And how, how many crates did you guys uh, um, sell? What was the number about? Like, was it a thousand? I, I think it was way more than a thousand. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was way more than a thousand. Yeah, and like that's like I said, that number was shocking to us that it sold that much. So, and so for the next, are you all planning to uh, raise the like the number for the next one? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for the next quarter. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's yeah. I know Um, people that were worried that like because it's like a renewal thing that like all these people are locked in and now nobody ever is going to get an A. Yeah, yeah. So that's (laughs) that's the thing too, like with the pro wrestling crate, because that's the thing. Once you're locked in, you're subscribed, unless obviously you don't make your payment or you cancel, then that opens up a slot for someone else. But yeah, no, we we're definitely planning for the next quarter to have way more to get those signups and then obviously account for the renewals that we'll have. So I think we'll be good for the next one. Yeah. Um, and so obviously, um, for those who don't know, you do more than just pro wrestling tees. You are also the Correct. owner proprietor of M3 toys. So, Correct. so tell us what is M3 toys, how you came up with the idea and yeah. what it is. Yeah. So basically M3 toys is a Funko pop toy collectible website. We carry more than just Funko. We carry NECA products. We carry star Wars, black series, WWE figures, pretty much anything that's a collectible we carry. So we pretty much started um, in the basement of where I'm at now. Um, It was just me and my wife running it. Um, Just some background on the name, um, M3. So it's me, Michael, my wife, Monica, and my son, Matthew. So three M's. Yeah, so that's where the name came from. Okay. Yeah, so we pretty much, yeah, so we just started, honestly, with Funko. um, And I think our first pre-order, I want to say, was the Bullet Club Funko Pops that we started with. So we started with those. We were doing everything from home, from our basement. And then using, obviously, what I know with marketing and promoting, that kind of stuff, I it took off way more than we expected. And we just got way too busy to keep doing stuff from home. So uh, one of Ryan's buildings um, was open. So he's like, why don't you just move your stuff here and you can open up shop here. So now we have pretty much four spaces. So we have like a store location that customers could go in and visit and it's all in stock stuff. We have a shipping area where we have three employees now and they work there. And my wife runs that day to day while I'm at processing tees and we're moving to a new building. So moving a new building. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're ran out of space again. Yeah. So we're, we're getting a brand new building. Uh, one of Ryan's buildings again. And honestly, we couldn't do it without Ryan because he's been very, very helpful with this. I learned, I pick up a lot of what Ryan does and use it to what I do. Um, kind of like our growing up scenario. It's very, very similar. So, yeah. So I pick up a lot of what he does and, you know, get a lot of ideas from that. Gotcha. Um, and how, how did you get involved in pro wrestling tees? I meant to ask that earlier. Yeah. So 
I was so pretty much before I was doing pro wrestling tees, I was doing club events and concerts. Going back to what I was saying, I was using my voice a lot. I used to host events, talk on the mic, and that kind of stuff. So okay, I left that market. Um, I sold my part of the of the company back then. So I was looking for something. I'm like trying to find something interesting that maybe I could do with marketing because that was my my go to. And I seen a post that Ryan made on the One Hour Tees Facebook page. I want to say, yeah. So he made a post looking for someone to handle their marketing. I'm like, cool. Let me try. I've heard of Pressing Tees. I've done orders at One Hour Tees before for my old business for custom shirts. And so I sent my resume. He contacts me a couple minutes later um, via email, which he's very very good at contacting back via email and text, like instant. So the next day, go for an interview, and that was pretty much it. So I've been there almost seven years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I've seen the growth, you know, going from where Pressing Tees was pretty much in that growth phase to now everything. I mean, it's it's not just shirts anymore. Obviously, you guys know that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so. do you ever think there will be a second Pro Wrestling Tees location? <laughs> I, I just i just i don't, I don't so. need I, one in new york because you know <laughs> you know we but. i've honestly i've mentioned it to ryan so many times because honestly it does make sense to have another store and like the big markets like new york you know miami you know la those kind of areas but it, it all depends on how you know the local market is as far as shopping right now people are, are used to ordering from the site so what's the point of opening a store you know, we have, honestly, the store right now for people that want to come in and get those new arrivals right away, like the next day, or get store exclusives, that kind of thing. But the back of the store is more warehouse space and printing and that kind of stuff, too. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I think Ryan said on that idea of just Chicago, and that's it. The, the New York State flag is not as uh, nice as the <laughs> Chicago flag, so it's not going to look as good in, like, your Lois and Granada's shirt there. Right, like, exactly. It's not going to sell as well. You no. know, <laughs> you could have the Statue of Liberty like too sweeting. That'd be pretty dope, but you know, that would be, yeah. <laughs> um, I forget what my next, oh yes. So I did, I did have to quickly just double check the name on them. But so with all the collectibles and I've, I've been looking for it for years, except I don't want to spend the money on eBay. You wouldn't uh -huh. happen to have in stock at M3 toys, the, uh, the NECA, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of our shell toys, do you? No, I do not. Wow. <laughs> Go on that, eBay that... for all your toy collectibles. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I have that know. VHS somewhere in this house, too. I used to Man. wear that down as a kid. So There's so much stuff coming out, too, like with NECA. Obviously, they announced some stuff today um, that went on sale that kind of sold out right away, too. You know, it, it, it's crazy, you know, the collectibles that are – going on now and even like with micro brawlers you know that's turning into its own thing now yeah. you know i remember like last year we couldn't sell these things in the thousands and now you know they sell out right away so it's crazy it's yeah. they've grown so much there's courses for it i've gone to school i'm a scholar in micro <laughs> i mean it's, it's big no one really no, thinks no. it's not a cred credible degree but degree not yeah less. No, and I remember too, like the conversation with Ryan, you know, it, I think it took a good two years to get them to do variants. Because I was like, this thing could be like a next Funko. Because I think people are getting to the point. I didn't know, but I, you know, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, it was, it was to the point where I seen people collecting them and they're keeping them in the, in the hang package before. I'm like, they, they want to keep them as mint as possible. I'm like, this is turning into, you know, that type of coll uh, collectible. Yeah, so so early. It, it, yeah <laughs> it took a while to get them to, to do that um but obviously now there's variants there's you know variants in the crates so i i think people like it i think people like that hunt and that that chase and being completed so i think it's cool all right um and speaking of uh collectibles and exclusives m3 toys recently got the exclusive frank the clown brawler yeah um, everyone loves that one <laughs> i like it i think it's yeah. cool we'll, we'll get to that but i'm, I'm no, curious sure. on the process <laughs> of how does it be like because obviously um with the exception of like what you know the major pod guys have done like right. how did how did how does it go about becoming an, an m3 toys exclusive rather than pro wrestling tees.com selling it right so that that was a cool thing so obviously the connection with obviously me at pro wrestling tees and then the connection with m3 toys so it was a little bit easier for me to do but again it took some convincing with Ryan 
Um, Cause this is pretty much the first outside of wrestling retailer exclusive. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of have to, you know, make it a big deal. And I, I don't know why at the top of my head, Frank, the clown popped up. Um, we've been talking about it for a while, but I'm like, ah, let's do it. I, I, I knew it was going to piss people off and that was the goal. But hey, they're selling. So I think we, I think 70% have sold already. So, you know, they'll be sold out. We have all the way until fall to sell. So, but yeah, it was, um, it was some convincing, but it was cool. One thing that I do give you guys props for compared to like what impacted with their sign brawlers, you gave the option if you want it signed, you can get that. Correct. Like yeah. I, because I remember the first wave of impact, I didn't get them because only autograph ones were left. Right. I collect them loose, and it's just I don't want a bubble that's signed. So and you know what's crazy? I'm honestly shocked at the amount of autograph Frank the Clown brawlers that have sold. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I'm I'm shocked. Um, because like we were talking about it, and I'm like, yeah, just do you know ten bucks extra, and he's like, I'm not even gonna sell two. And then I'm showing <laughs> him the numbers. I'm like, yeah, you, you're definitely <laughs> off. Yeah, so. That's another market, autograph collectors, you know. Yeah, there's, there's certain guys that that's all they collect. They're like autograph microbrawler completists. They don't. Yeah. Don't and that's play. the thing, too. Like, I've gotten <laughs> emails from people that bought the autographs. They're like, where is he going to sign it? Can you sign it on this specific area? Can you put my name on it? And I'm like, really? You're being this specific for Frank the Clown? I'm like, okay, maybe he's bigger than I thought. But cool. I, I think I'm the only one with a specific Frank the Barracuda mar uh, the marijuana <laughs> Barracuda <laughs> mint box bomb. Yes, he signed the card for me because I let them breathe. So I was like, I don't want the bubble. I want the trade cool. card signed. So oh man, he had fun with those. Jesus, oh. it, yeah. it, people that was great just watching people reach out and like putting out Facebook ads and Craigslist ads. Like, are you in the <laughs> Chicago area? Can you buy this toy for me? I was like, people are nuts. <laughs> So yeah. we even had a puppet. Harold the puppet went into the store to get a brawler. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, oh, did saw. you get to meet Harold? No, no, but I saw the post. Yeah, he's a terrible person. Harold's a terrible puppet. <laughs> Support Harold that. on TikTok, everyone. Um, of course. But Voice so for, uh, now it's a WrestleMania or uh, SummerSlam, right? <laughs> yes, I hope so. Fingers crossed for that. Um, but so obviously we we joked about the the backlash that the Frank the Clown brawler got. Oh, yeah. Were you guys expecting it? Were you kind of? Oh yeah hurt by it you know because at least are you are you in the micro brawler group michael oh yeah so yeah like i consider that my online family and just to see yeah. like all this hatred spew out that day kind of made me mad i'm like yeah frank's so, not everyone's so like, cup of tea pass on it but just what? right yeah so like i said before i'm like i definitely expected that i expected some of the hate and the backlash from it you know frank the clown is you know he's a pro wrestling figure no matter what you know, being coming from all the shows and being front row and being that guy that John Cena acknowledged, the guy that CM Punk knows. So it's he's a wrestling figure. So that's why I'm like, let's do him. Um, did it hurt that people were, you know, not not really. I, I, I don't take that kind of stuff personally because it's business. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just let it go. You know, if it fails, it fails. You move on to the next thing. But like I said, it's moving, it's selling every day. So it really didn't bother me. But we kind of expected the backlash. Frank was loving it. And he's like, should I comment on everyone? I mean, no. I mean, Absolutely. Get I'm him in the micro oh. oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he had to get in there. Oh, oh the, the VIP group on the, was uh, worse. The PW yeah. cast went, went in pretty hard oh. this week. Oh, Dave was going hard, yeah. Yeah, he was telling me, he's like, should I go in on these guys? I'm like, I don't care. Do whatever you want. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, he was giving it to him, yeah. <laughs> And, but and, it's cool. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this, like, whether you like Frank or not, that's a great-looking brawler. Like, yeah, I, it's going to be cool. I've commented that there's, there's some brawlers that kind of look a little off on, like, whether they're the person. But that Frank the Clown brawler, with all that color, all that detail, that's yeah. Frank, without a question. Yeah, oh, so. of course. And, yeah, and that was, too, the thing, too, about, you know, getting it made. There was a couple of different modifications we had to do because of that, but I think it turned out really, really good. So I think people will like the final product when they see it. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait. I ordered mine. There five, you go. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> so there you I go. play around with micro brawlers. You never know. <laughs> that, that's the thing. Yeah. It's gonna be worth it's gonna be worth Xbox money one day. It's got Xbox <laughs> heat already, so why not Xbox money too? You never know. <laughs> so we we told you about the top three twos, and we'll we'll get to that a little later. But I For but sure. my my thought was if you didn't come up with one, my top three Tuesday idea was gonna be <laughs> Who would get the most backlash if a brawler was made of them? Oh, so I want everyone to just give one. 
of who you think would be the most backlash, like who oh, would get Frank God. the Clown level heat if he mm. if he or she was made into a brawler. I'll start mm. and I'll go, go with Jim Cornette. I think oh, somebody, yeah, I think a murder would actually happen in Chicago. <laughs> but full disclosure, I would buy that in one second. I, I would actually like a Jim Cornette. Is my oh, yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people. Bad person. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> you know how many variants you could do with that? Oh, oh man. man. All the You're tennis rackets, different glass yeah, frames. <laughs> yep. Nick, how about you? I'm oh, sorry, man, King Nick. Uh, put me on the spot here. Uh, what about a. Uh, James Ellsworth. Ooh. Oh my God! <laughs> hey, you do a chin with, with the chin. With the chin. I'm gonna do the James and Ellsworth. Any, any man with two fists. <laughs> I don't know. I can come up with something better, but that's what I got right now. Ryan, <laughs> who who would who would piss people off? I mean, I'm canceling my pro wrestling crate. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the only person I can come up with. I'm usually not controversial. It's only because of controversy. Uh, Chris Benoit. But obviously get yes. 50, Honestly, 50. Another, like one, another one and, that I would buy. <laughs> yeah, and you know, people said, have asked us for those like crazy. You know, every I time, every time with the it's coming, I've seen at least one Chris Benoit coming. Like, <laughs> oh, back, huh? <laughs> That's oh, like the, the, the most played out joke ever in like anything wrestling. Like, oh, who's going to uh, be debuting on AEW? Chris Benoit. Yeah. Ben Chris Wah <laughs> is all elite. <laughs> But Michael, who would who would be your next most controversial brawler selection? I don't I don't know about controversial because I have no idea, but at least <laughs> one that'll piss off the community, at least the micro brawler community, would probably be the most limited Ryan Barkin brawler. The uh, one of one. Yeah. Maybe. He's gonna charge money to take pictures with who him. Knows? Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know, who knows how that'll <laughs> even work out if there's like Oh, it's only 10 available live now. Go for it. You're in, you're in store. Jesus. I mean, that that would break some hearts there. And then you'll see all the, the comments. I'm selling my collection or I'm getting rid of everything. <laughs> you know what, you though? Know? I love when those brawlers get made, when these controversial brawlers get made. You know why? Because yeah. I swoop in at low prices <laughs> and add to my collection. Yeah, it, it's insane seeing the value of these things, though. Like, I, I remember seeing hundreds of these things just laying around and I'm like, wow now they're worth hundreds and you know 500 bucks for some of them it's it's insane you know my kid used to chew on some of them when he was a baby i'm like don't don't make your kids chew on them but, but yeah, yeah. Teething. yeah there you go nick when you when your kid's born next, yeah. you know, next month and i yeah. always laugh because the reason i started collecting them was because i was like oh it's only one a month in a crate so there's only like 12 it's nice and small and stuff is cheap and it won't take yeah. up a lot of room and then it just yeah. turned into this whole addiction well, honestly yeah i mean that's the thing like it wasn't supposed to be you know its own product it was just supposed to be you know in your crates and that's it and but now it's obviously you get the exclusive one in the crate then there's other ones that we're going to release during you know the year so it, it's it's pretty crazy to see how much it's grown Absolutely. definitely oh, you know there's a there's a lot of proud people because, like, Dave obviously designs it. You know, Ryan comes up with ideas. I come up with the idea of how to kind of release things and promote it. So I, I, it's cool to see how much is growing, and it's cool to see how much everyone enjoys it. Does any does anyone actually know what Ryan is talking about when he keeps telling us at two in the morning it's coming? No, definitely not. No, <laughs> sure. You don't want to give us an NRD exclusive on what's no. happening. We're not Definitely. recording at all, I promise. <laughs> now I see the little red light somewhere there. So Ryan Barkin's <laughs> not gonna watch this. Come on. Yeah. Does he? Oh, he's Have texting he... me now. <laughs> Get off Zoom now. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, we're we're always working on stuff late. And trust me, there's like ideas we'll come up with like at, at midnight and we're texting. We're like, oh yeah, let's do this tomorrow or let's launch this. You know, a lot of a lot of brawler decisions have been made like that, to be honest. Like the the tweet that like the, the CM Punk tweet on the PWT's uh, Twitter just before we started recording this, we saw them like, oh wait, what? Uh, yeah, oh, no. yeah. Like, sure it wasn't well, like a that's why I was a little delayed <laughs> getting going. We're <laughs> like, hold on, let's just check the website, yeah. everything. So. Y'all have a yeah, let, let, <laughs> yeah, let's see what it's at now. So like, I just posted oh, it for the hell of it. What is it at now? While you're looking at that, you guys need to do ad content because we're accessing your site so much. I don't know if there's some way like YouTube ad content you can get that. Just a weird oh, thought. To, 
Uh, to monetize stuff, you mean? How many cool. times we all just ads. check your website and come on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. And, and, and trust me, we see you guys refreshing and F5-ing at the micro brawler page. Oh, yeah. And stuff oh like you can that. see that. that. Okay. Five, oh, yeah. I, I see it all the time. Drop. Start refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have analytics and I have access to all that. I'm like, look, there's 400 people refreshing the micro brawler page. I'm like, they're getting ready. <laughs> So I'd like to apologize crazy. to my boss. I actually do work <laughs> just, you know, just refreshing the computer. Yeah, and, and the by the way, thing, if we're in group chats and stuff, that's like a running joke. Yep. Like, so everybody starts posting like memes with like the refresh thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, the, and luckily the, the site has gotten a lot smoother now too for these kind of drops too. Yeah. We've upgraded a bunch of stuff. Uh, we got some developers that, are, that work with us now. So they've, they've done a good job with that. I think it's been a lot smoother now. Yeah, I've noticed that. And speaking of the tweet we mentioned, it is the CM Punk in the ring. Do I have your attention now, GIF? <laughs> and it's at, this was posted, what, uh, half hour ago, 45 minutes? Yeah. 65 retweets, 21 quote tweets, <laughs> 389 likes. <laughs> Yikes. Job well done. What, there you go. What's going to happen? That The site's going to crash if and when he debuts next month. Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm who sure knows what's going to happen. Shirt. He'll come out and it'll be like, CM Punk, AEW shirt, blah, right away. No, it's how, how you guys started with the I Broke Big Show's hand. I crashed yeah. the Pro Wrestling T site. It, it, it would be insane. Are you guys going to be there at the show, all you guys? I will I, not I, be. Well, I'm in Florida. I will not oh. be. I'm, I mean, yeah, we're all over the – we've got New York, California, and Florida here. Gotcha. So, Next year. I'll be at Arthur Ashe Stadium, so hopefully some guy named Brian shows up. Right. Come on, that, baby. That would be insane. Uh, Oh, that, I, lose I mean, my mind. Yeah. It, who knows? See? Who knows? The rumors are out there. The confirms are out there. Who knows? We should just my, my, spot to shout it out now. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> Michael, I'm curious, uh, Michael Brawler wise, do you have you kept any? Yeah. No, so no I, shame I, if you had it. No shame. Just wondering. No, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to keep every single one of them. Um, my kid has them in his little money in the bank briefcase, lunchbox. <laughs> He keeps them all in there from the, the, the start, pretty much. He has awesome. them all there, and then I have the rest of them. His room is all wrestling right now, so he has his Orange Cassidy flag, all the micro brawlers on the wall, the AEW ones, all the AEW figures, so he has all those now. So I, I kind of collect for him now. But, awesome. yeah, yeah, but he has everything now. I'm cool. curious, who is, who is your son's favorite wrestler right now? Orange Cassidy, 100%. Oh, awesome. Yeah, loves him. Yeah, I would I just. To, I tried to sell the wife on the wrestling nursery, and she didn't go for it. So hopefully, when he gets a no. little bit older, I can I can swing to the rest. You know that that's how it was with my wife too. Like we were watching, you know, obviously the only thing was WWE, but she's like, it's so boring. Like there's nothing else to watch. And then AEW came, and we're like, we're directly involved with this. Let's watch it. So it was. It's cool now. You know, we every Wednesday that's what we watch, and you know. You know, we see everything going on. I'm working sometimes at the same time, you know, launching products or whatnot. But yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. It, it's cool to see that. And it's cool to see that with my four-year-old now that he likes it. I'm going to take him to one of the shows um, all out. We can probably rampage. It'll be a little bit you know, not as crazy, I think. Yeah, I, I don't. He would. He would. He would be very overwhelmed to see him. Punk came out and just like the crowd just started rioting. My God. I, I, <laughs> Who's I this, Dad? Imagine. Yeah, I can't even imagine if that's going to happen. Oh, my God. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm DJing a <laughs> wedding during All Out, so I'm, like, going to have it on my phone, and I'm, like, oh, just God. imagine. I'm, like, all right, we'd like to interrupt the first dance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> CM Punk debuted. <laughs> all right, now back to this song. Play Cult of Personality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'd like to open up the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even know you were a DJ. That's I used to be a DJ also. So oh, there you go. okay. Yes. Yeah. DJ Dave, see the voice. For the best in entertainment, there's only one choice. DJ Dave, there see you the go. voice. I'm insured awesome. and fully vaccinated, everyone. You can hire me. Just comment where you're getting married below. I, awesome. I told, I said, if uh, if Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green need a DJ, I'm available on New Year's Eve. So I'll make there that you happen go. for them. <laughs> Did they post their, their brawler thing already? They, put the, they, the they card, posted the card, the card up. The oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's another controversial one right there. It's like, yeah, yeah they have anything they do, you know. I hope they yeah, have good security yeah, at that wedding because somebody's going to try to to hop on in there and just like try and <laughs> like a little bit. Everybody favorite. keeps saying that they're going to uh, yeah. hit up Dolph Ziggler and try to buy. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> I'd be here for that. Um, but so we will move to our top three Tuesday. And as our guest, Michael, you chose your top three Tuesday for brawlers you want made of recently released superstars. Correct? Correct. So we will give you the option. Do you want to go first or do you want to go last? I'll go last because I got to look up that list, but go for okay. it. Okay. All right. King Nick, <laughs> who, uh, who do you have on your list, your highness? All right. Well, I didn't look at the list either, so I'm, I've been trying to think this whole time. But Some I know king. Some king, ladies and gentlemen. A Braun Strowman. Maybe make him like Andre, like a little bit bigger. Adam Schurer, is that his the name? The only brawler that they've ever made a little bit taller was the Andre. Everybody else is pretty much in the yeah. same scale. He could be that one up. Yeah. Uh, They're coming back one day. That's what's coming. That's what we keep saying. <laughs> just yearly, just yearly, though. Uh, how about an Iconics two pack? Iconic. <laughs> and uh, the former Alistair Black now. Oh, come on. Oh, Black. man. <laughs> That's four. That's four, you cheater. Some king. I can't wait to that one happens. <laughs> I hate you. I got to rethink my list. I don't know. It would be hard, though. He's got a lot of tattoos, and I know that the tattoos aren't the most easiest thing to do on the brawlers. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm sure they can figure it out. Put them on a vest or something. For yeah. sure. All right. Huh? Ryan. All right, uh, I'm gonna go Killian Dane. He's uh, oh, uh, very cool. interesting, and yeah. I, I like him as well. Uh, Tony Nice, only only so we can have someone with more abs than Tessa Blanchard or Britt Baker. I think <laughs> the, I think they have the best abs of the brawlers so far. We need Tony Nice to to take the crown. Um, and then Nick. I'm gonna go Ruby Riot. It would be a really toyetic one, cool one. Oh, very cool. cool. So is that I all true? Yeah. Do you have anything left, Dave? I got, oh, yeah, of course you do. Come on. I'm the king. I'm the real king. Only uh, like 100 people got released. So, <laughs> so, number one, let's get really controversial and piss a lot of people off. Let's go with Lana, CJ Perry. Ooh. People would get pissed. I would buy it. But you have to make sure that that gets released <laughs> before a Miro Brawler gets released. Like, mm -hmm. why do we not have the Miro Brawler? Um, and then I'm going to go a two pack of Breezango, ah, Bondango, oh, and Tyler Breeze. Not, yeah. I mean, they're on PWC now. So, I mean, that's a possibility. D Dirty Dan or uh, what, uh, what is it? Uh, Dirtbag Dancer? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. And the, that shirt's great because it just has all the tour, the tour city all in catering. Yeah. yeah. That's a great design. That, that was his design. <laughs> it's a smart design. I like it. Yeah, he so, wanted that specifically. I like it. So, yes, that's that's my three. Brizongo uh, and, and Lana. I'm going through the list now. Um, Let's see. Buddy Murphy. Just because I think that guy's super talented. Yeah, he is. And he hasn't gotten a shot yet, but he's super, super talented. Yeah. Um, obviously an Andrade brawler. Obviously he's signed now, but would love to see that. Maybe a couple different variants, one with the mask, one without. Yeah. Okay. Um, who else? I'm going through the list now. Can we count Samoa Joe, even though he's back? I mean, he was Another released. Samoa. You are our guest. King, <laughs> will you allow it? Yes, I'll allow Samoa Joe. <laughs> Actually, with there all we go. Brawler. There you go. So that, that would be my three. All right. So let us know your top three in the comments section below of people that have been released that you want to see as brawlers because they need that supplemental income right now because they have their 90-day no-compete still. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, that's uh, – unless anybody else has any other questions, Ryan, Nick, Michael, do you have any questions for us on a, just a turn of <laughs> turnabout or whatnot? <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think I got a good idea of obviously what you guys want to see next. And I think you guys are excited about, you know, the future of Crossing Tees, the Micro Brawlers, AEW. So I think we just kind of have to wait and see what's going to happen. Can't wait. So, yes, you can you can <laughs> go ahead and plug away whatever you've got, M3 Toys, PWTs, whatever you want. The floor is yours, sir. Yeah, so for sure. So obviously check out the website, ProWrestlingTees.com. Obviously, everyone knows that already for all your shirts, all your micro brawlers, all your wrestling merch. We're, we're the one-stop shop. Uh, shop AEW for all your official AEW merch. And if you want to support me, buy a Franklin Clown micro brawler 
Uh, we only have a couple left, m3toys.com. It's our first exclusive, so we would definitely appreciate that. I like it. Can we expect yeah. more exclusives down the line? I think so. I think this is going to open the door for other retailers to kind of hit O'Brien and, you know, ask for that exclusive. Uh, maybe we'll get another one. Who knows? But I think I think this opens up the door, though, for sure. Excellent. Cool. I like it. We are excited to see what the future for M3 Toys has in store. We're excited for the future of wrestling when CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, <laughs> or I'm sorry, Brian Danielson debut at Arthur Ashe Stadium in front of me in New York City. Um, so, yes, until we get to there, we thank you all for joining us on the Wrestling Nerd broadcast. Of course, don't forget when you check out all the work that Michael does on ProWrestlingTees.com, you go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash the Wrestling Nerd broadcast, and that is nerd spelled N-R-D. You can get shirts in multiple colors. This great hat. We will have plenty more designs coming to you very soon. You can support us on Patreon, going to Patreon.com slash WNRDB. Just $3 a month, you get into our exclusive Facebook chat and your name on the credits and all our videos, autographs, Zoom chats, and so much more. Uh, Facebook.com slash WNRDB, Twitter at WNRDB. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, yeah. Like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Smash that <laughs> subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so that is going to do it for episode 28 of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. So on behalf of myself, the future king, Dave C., the voice, the current king, <laughs> the founding father, Nick Carpenter, the micro brawler scholar, Mr. Ryan Crossley, and of course, from M3 Toys and Pro Wrestling Teams, Mr. Michael Heredia. We thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tell your mother you love her every day, because like Kevin Durant said, Mom, you're the real MVP. Good night, everyone. And God bless America.